Welcome to the Wild Wealth Way. This podcast is powered by the team at Wild Wealth Management Group, an award-winning financial services firm that provides comprehensive retirement, investment, real estate, insurance, legal, and tax planning services all under one roof. In each episode, professionals from the firm and our trusted partners will delve into topics ranging from retirement and the stock market to tax planning and insurance. We will even assist getting your kids into college and help get it funded. Welcome to the Wild Wealth Way podcast. My name is Jackie Yoder. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Wild Wealth. And today I am joined with Larry Ritter. He is an affiliate of our firm here and they go by InTouch and they joined us. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be two years? Two years. Oh yeah, okay, so two years ago. And so I just wanted to welcome you to our podcast today. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually very excited to learn um, a little bit more about our topic today, which is gonna be talking around uh, working with um, families that have you know special needs, right? Sure. So first though, I want you to tell me a little bit about the history of your firm, yeah. as well as you used to be in IT and yeah. now are a financial advisor. How did that happen? <laughs> well, uh, out of college, I was an engineer, an electrical engineer. Okay. And I went and worked in tech for a lot of years. And I was mostly in operation side of software companies, IT software companies, in fact. And I was doing you know a lot of running companies and uh, that's my background. And I, I was going crazy with travel. Uh, I was traveling for the last four years. I traveled 50 weeks a year uh, for the last four years. I was running a, a company in California, another one in Boise, and I was just ready to get out. So I got out of that. And then Jason, who was my partner and also was managing my money at the time, said, are you going to retire and play golf all the time? And I said, I, I don't know. I might try. And he goes, you know more about money than any client I got, and you seem to like it. So why don't you come join us? So that's how I got connected with Jason about eight years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so I have to ask, are there any type of any similarities between the two industries? Well, you know, <laughs> here's the, the thing that I think is kind of interesting is, is that when I was in management, people told me I was good at kind of three things. They said, you're really good at like talking to people and asking like, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, what problem are you trying to solve? Yeah. I was really good at like strategy. Like, okay, if you want to do that, here's a couple of things we need to do to get there. And probably my biggest strength was in operations was like, are we on track? Are we getting this right. done? You know, what do we need to do to get back on track? And it, when I got into this business, I said, wow, that's exactly what we do too. You know, yeah. what do you want to do when you retire? You know, what, what's your life want to look like? Okay, here's some ways to get there and keeping people on track. So that's been a real really pleasant surprise. Yeah. So instead of employees, it's now clients, right? Yeah. yeah. And and I love the content. And so I'm really rejuvenated and loving it. Good. Well, we're super glad that you made that choice. Okay. So what led you, um, you and Jason, you mentioned Jason is your partner. Um, what led you to come to Wild Wealth? Oh, well, we were formerly at a, a different broker. It was an insurance-based broker. And we really wanted the independence of not having somebody looking over your shoulder and asking you how much life insurance did you sell this week or month or whatever. And so we were looking for an independent broker dealer. And obviously, Satera, you know, is that. And Wild certainly is a, a wonderful, strong, you know, a firm in Arizona. And, uh, you know, we, we joined for the independence. But what we're finding is like the support and the resources, you know, that we get here is just great. So we're we're loving it. Good, good. You don't have anyone looking over your shoulder anymore, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, maybe a compliance a little bit sometimes, right? Well, well yeah, don't, that's right. Compliance people, we love, we love you. Yes. I'm just saying um, I'm happy to sell whatever types of investments or insurance that people need you know, yeah. rather than feeling the pressure to deliver certain products. Yeah, it opens a whole new world for you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I love that. What is probably your favorite part about being a financial advisor? Ooh. Um, you know, a really interesting part about it, I, I, to me, the, the, is when the light bulb goes on when you're working with a client and and you know that they now treat you as a trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're not like, hey, I got this IRA. Can you manage this IRA or give me some investment tips? They're calling you up and saying, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Or, you know, my, my kid is this old and they want to do this. Or... 
you know, we want to change our timeline for what we do in retirement. Mm -hmm. And, and that's when you kind of get a really great feeling because you're not just providing a tactical service mm -hmm. to manage an account. You're, you're really important part of their life, you know, yeah. and that, that's, that, that's what gets me going. I like that a lot. Good. Yeah. yeah. I actually didn't know how you would answer that because from my viewpoint, you're so good with people. Um, but I also feel like you're very analytical at the same time. Oh, so um, I, I wasn't sure which avenue you were going to take there. <laughs> um, so I mean, I'm going to have to. So you do have your uh, it's called the Chartered Special Needs Consultant designation. Mm -hmm. What does that stand for you? And and what do you do with that, essentially? Yeah. OK, it's a it's a certification mm -hmm. where you work with families that have a special needs member and that yeah. member could be mentally disabled or physically disabled but they obviously need someone else to uh, take a real active role in making sure that their life is managed for them and so that's that's what it does uh, it, it's a certification where you get a lot of training on the different kinds of trusts and uh, support you know from social security disability mm -hmm. Uh, other types of social security insurance, disability insurance, et cetera, you know, ABLE accounts, all those kinds of things to help people kind of navigate what they need to know about this stuff because it's very different than if you're not disabled. Right. Yeah. Um, so from a financial perspective, what is the difference for a family with special needs member? You kind of touched on they have to do extra planning and yeah. all of that. Is there any yeah. other aspects? Well, you know, let me just expand on that a little bit because in a typical family, like your family could say, your mom and dad say, Jackie, you know, you're, you're bright, you're educated, you've got a great job. If we leave something for you, all the better. But even if we don't, you're going to be fine, mm -hmm. right? Special needs people don't have that option, right? It's like if the parents pass and they haven't planned for either how they're going to live, how their money is going to be taken care of, it's not going to happen, you know? And, and so what's really different for them is there's no option but to plan for that person. You right. know, otherwise that person could be in a real difficult situation. And I would assume too, um, I feel like I've known people, but that have had family members that are special needs that even when they're still around, they actually have special care for them. So I'm assuming that's probably part of some of the planning oh, as well. Yeah. Because sometimes it's too much, right, for the family members. Uh, oh, it to sure is. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a lot of work. Uh, I imagine somewhere in one of your questions, you say, well, how, why did I do this, you know? Yeah, it was my and, next question, okay. yeah. <laughs> Most everybody I know that's in this space or has a certification, I think there's about 300 of them in the United States, by the way. There's I, only 300 people that have I, this? I believe so. Okay. They have that certification, yeah. And it, it's a pretty rare certification. That doesn't make it anything special, but... My story is I grew up with a special needs sister. Okay. You know, my sister was Down syndrome. And I remember as a young kid, you know, she'd get a job at McDonald's wiping tables. And my folks were all worried about, well, we've got to be careful. She doesn't have more than you know, $1,500 to her name because then they'll cut off the benefits and mm -hmm. things. And I always thought that was kind of crazy and ridiculous, you know, for that. Because, you know, someone's there trying to work and, you know, she loved that job. And that's, you know, made her feel really special. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, that kind of stayed with me. And then here I was working, we, we do some 401k plans locally. And one of them is a firm that has basically daycare for disabled adults, you know. So oh. a lot of people, you know, take your two-year-old in for daycare. Well, yeah. they're dropping off their 30-year-olds for that. Yeah. And I was talking to the, to the president of it. She said, yeah, a lot of our families, you know, needed uh, advice and, and, and assistance. And I said, well, you know, and Coincidentally, somebody mentioned one of these certifications, and, mm -hmm. and I, I had my personal connection. And I said, well, heck, I'll just go get one. So during COVID, I just studied up and did it. Well, and, you all uh, had extra time then, right? Yeah, I had all that extra time. Yeah. And then recently, we just did a series, uh, a five-part series at that uh, location with parents of the various types of guardianships and social di different kinds of trusts. It was really well attended. They, they loved it. It was oh, great. good. Yeah, so it's fun. What are some of like the high level, like absolutely do's and some don'ts, I guess, in that scenario? Yeah, well, probably the, the, the do's is really understand um, and use trusts to protect the assets mm -hmm. for your loved one. Yeah. Okay. 
And there's really two kinds of trust. There's a, a first party trust, which those assets are owned by that person. Mm -hmm. And then there's a second kind of trust called a third party trust, where it's a trust that has assets for the benefit of that person. Yeah. And they're handled very differently in terms of if you're getting aid from the government, whether you have to pay it back, mm -hmm. you know, when you die out of your assets or not. So you really do need to understand and have the assets placed in the right kinds of trusts so that you can get the most amount of benefit from these programs without, you know, putting you over limits and things like that. Yeah. Now, probably the biggest don't is is as much as we love these people, don't just say, hey, I'm going to make the beneficiary of my life insurance policy to be, mm -hmm. you know, my special needs sister or yeah. nephew or niece, because then those are assets that they own and it'll likely disqualify them from support in a lot of these programs. Right. And so uh, just don't don't put them down as, as the beneficiary by name. Uh, use their trusts, you know, to put the money directly for them. That's probably the biggest do's and don'ts I've seen. Yeah. Well, I, I was even thinking that as you were talking through the do of the, all the trusts, um, you're, you have an amazing partner, Chloe, who does all your paperwork. Do. I'm sure she loves that part of it, she is <laughs> but the best. Yeah. yeah, but I think, no, that's awesome. I, I feel like I've learned so much asking all these questions today. <laughs> I never even knew half of this. Yeah. And I think it's amazing that you kind of took this on and I think you can do a really, really great things for a lot of people. And um, can you just lastly tell us something fun? Do you have a trip coming up? Anything fun going on? <laughs> well, I, I, I just got back from a trip uh, okay. two weeks ago. I took my wife to uh, Pebble Beach. She's, okay. She always wanted to play golf there. So we went and played golf there with some friends. So that was good fun. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I always thought I'd be a professional golfer or something. <laughs> But here I am. So apparently it didn't work out. It's okay. And, uh, but anyway, so that's uh, that's what we did lately. And then uh, my wife and I, we'd love to travel around. We're going to go to Alaska next year. So that's our next big um, thing. So. That'll be so be nice. Yeah, yeah, that's on on a bucket list for me, for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I appreciate everything. And I, I have no doubt that you sharing this with everyone is going to reach somebody that you can help as well. So. Oh, my pleasure. These, yeah. these people need need as much help, if not, well, more help than the average person. And, yeah. and so it's, it's really, it makes you feel good to help them to have those families know that that person is taken care of because that's what my parents had to do for my sister. And uh, I wish everybody the best on that. Yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Good to be here. Thank you for joining the Wild Wealth Way. If you would like to meet with one of our trusted advisors, please go to www.wildwealth.com or call our office at 480-361-6203. You did great. No, you're one, you are, you're very natural. Um, yeah. You're very natural. Well, I was professionally media trained. When I was- Oh, really?